Hey guys, and welcome back to That LP Show. The name of the game is Donkey Kong 64. Now that we flipped the switch to power up the factory, we now have all those machines up and running, which gives us access to the rest of our golden bananas. So we'll be spending most of the episode in that central area, gathering up the rest of the collectibles, and we'll try to finish up Frantic Factory today. And it doesn't matter who we start off with because we'll be going through here with all of the Kongs anyway. I just wanted to start off with Diddy so I could grab those coins in the storage room. And as you can see, we have some red bananas here for him and we get another banana medal. And we'll be experiencing many ups and downs here. And by ups and downs, I mean attempting to climb up and repeatedly falling down. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have to make liberal use of crossfades here to not waste anybody's time. This is where the platforming really ramps up in terms of difficulty. Because most of the golden bananas are way up high and we have to climb to the top of this area with a few of the Kongs in order to get to them, as well as other collectibles, and there are a lot of moving parts involved. And to be perfectly honest, most of the difficulty doesn't come from the platforming itself, or, or the obstacles, or, or uh, level design for that matter. It's from the camera angles, as well as the game's wonky collision detection. Unfortunately, this is the thing we're going to uh, run into quite often. That is difficulty resulting from simply not being able to see where you're going rather than the actual challenge itself. But so far, we seem to be uh, doing pretty easy. This is where it really starts to get annoying because you have this rotating platform right here, but I can't ever seem to get the camera situated to a point where I can see it coming so you just kind of have to take a leap of faith and hope that you timed it right but we have that uh, number four warp pad right there so we won't be having to deal with it too much I mean if we fall down at any point past this we can just simply warp to that part and of course lack of a visible drop shadow can make those moving platforms a little bit difficult to navigate through so there's that we made it through all right. Is there anything over here? Nope. Okay. Anyway, don't be intimidated by these rotating platforms. As you, can, If you just wait for them to slow down, be patient. They're easy enough to uh, get over. But anyway, well, come on. There we go. Use Simeon Spring to get that. And we have another golden banana for Diddy. And that's also all 100 of his regular bananas. So we're pretty much... Whoa! Oh, 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 okay, well, I wanted to go down here anyway, so shortcut. We're done with Diddy until we turn in his blueprint, so let's get to that tag barrel and switch to another Kong. Oh, and that toy Kremlin right there can be very annoying because he just hovers around the, um, the warp pad, the number four warp pad there, and sometimes you can pop out and he'll immediately get a hit on you. Okay, so now on to Linky, and his next golden banana is also one that involves climbing up to the top of the area. So I'll be using him next because I just want to get the more difficult ones over with. But first, he has a few things in here. A few coins, and okay, nothing there. But let's see. Pull out the grape shooter, and he has a balloon right there. So let's go ahead and shoot that. We don't have to... Oh, come on. I guess I'm a little bit too close to the edge right there. This should do it. Wait for it to line up. And there we go. Oh, I thought it hit it again. Okay, right. well, that's all we really need to do here with Lanky. That's a fairly easy one to forget if you're not paying attention to your surroundings. Okay, so where's Lanky's switch? Oh, uh, try to be careful when passing through the sides there because those boxes can sometimes come out and fly into you. And that would hurt. Okay, so they put Lanky Kong's Golden Banana a little bit higher than what Diddy Kong's was. And I could use that number four warp pad to get a little bit closer to it. Unfortunately, Lanky Kong has some collectibles on the path before it, so we would have to backtrack anyway in order to get those. Can you get up there, Lanky? Thank you. In fact, Tiny Kong has one of her balloons up here, if I'm not mistaken, so we would have to... Come on, please get up there, thank you. Yeah, there's Tiny Kong's balloon. 
Uh, so, yeah, that, that number four warp pad is pretty much uh, just in case we fall once we're, um, once we're at a higher level. And this thing isn't going to slow down, and I don't feel like... Whoa, I don't feel like... Uh, now it slows down. Great. Okay. I just didn't want to have to go all the way around again because of that rotating thing. Okay, can I make it? No! Alright, well, that's all of... Um, that's all of... Lanky's collectibles that are located before the warp pad, so I'm just going to go back around. Where is it? There it is. Don't... You son of a bitch. Here, have an orange. There we go. He'll respawn and probably get me again. I don't think I'm gonna even bother climbing all the way up with Tiny Kong, because she just has that one balloon, and then, um... I can just go to the warp pad, because her first collectibles after that are those coins you just saw. All right, um, what the hell? What the he Come on, quit going through the coin. Grab the coin, please. Grab, what the hell? Okay, there we go. That was weird. Good game. I don't know what the hell is going on there. And I do believe he has a balloon. There it is. Okay, let's find a good position here. Uh, where's its stopping point? Hmm, nope, nope, I think I'll just hold it here, wait for it to come back. There we go, and that's another banana medal. And I think by the time we're done with Frantic Factory, we'll have 15 banana medals so we can see what uh, Cranky has for us. And, you know, I probably should have gone right there. Oh, well, they, they only spin fast for a little while, and then they'll slow down. Sometimes they, um, they're not timed right, and only one will slow down, and the other one will move really fast. But it looks like I got lucky there. As you can see, there's uh, DK's Kasplat, so we'll be back up here with him. Let's go ahead and use the orangutan. And the camera is not your friend here, so let's go ahead and go nice and slow. As long as we can make it up, if we fall back down on the uh, way down, not a big deal. Anyway, there's one, all 100 of Lanky's bananas and another golden banana for Lanky. And with that, we're, we're done with him until we turn in his blueprint. So maybe I can... Come on, camera. Can I do this? It would be nice if I could just make it to that tag barrel and then get DK uh, real quick to take care of his splat. And the camera's trying to swing back around me. That's probably because I have it on follow. I guess this is one situation where that's not necessarily a good thing. All right. Oh, I still got to go over this thing. All right. Wait for it to slow down. And go, 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 go. Then I have to jump all the way over it with Donkey Kong without failing. Or without without falling. Well, falling, failing. Same thing. Whatever. Words. Okay. Let's head back and take care of that Kasplat. And then I guess I could just jump down. All right. Wait for it. See, see, this one's spinning really fast, and the other one was going slow, which means this one's probably going to slow down while the other one's still spinning fast, and then I'll lose my opportunity. Let's just go ahead and attempt it. There we go. All right, I don't want to run the risk of him knocking me down with a shockwave, so I'm just going to pull out the coconut gun and fire in spurts. Not enough? There we go. Okay, quickly put the gun away and jump over because they only take like five seconds to fade away. Oh, there's a tag bear right there. I guess I could switch to... Yeah, actually, you know what? Don't want to switch to Tiny just yet. No, 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 no. You get away from me. There we go. Did you see that? What a dick move. Anyway, we have a Strong Kong barrel right here, which we can use to make DK invincible, which is the only way to get through these crushers. And at the other end, God, the camera here. Whatever, it's not like uh, we can get hurt. But at the end here, we have another golden banana for DK. There we go. And of course, now we have 100 bananas with him as well. So he's pretty much done here until we turn in the blueprints. And getting out of here is a lot easier than going in. Or at the very least, a little bit faster because the treadmill's going in the opposite direction. Okay, so Tiny Kong is another one with a golden banana all the way at the top of the area. So I'm going to hit up this tag barrel and switch to her next. And I'm pretty sure the only 
The only collectible that she has prior to the uh, to the number four warp pad is that one purple balloon. So as long as we can make it up and get that, then we shouldn't have too much difficulty. I just need to find her button. There we go. And hers is the highest one of all. Okay. Don't hit me with a shockwave, Kasplat. I'm always nervous that he's gonna run up and do that when I'm tr uh, when I'm waiting for the platform to come down. Anyway, her ponytail twirl actually makes platforming a lot easier, so now I don't have to worry about falling off these pipes because I can just twirl right on over to this corner. There we go. All right. Now where's her balloon? There it is. Okay. And is this a good stopping point? I think right about here should be good. There we go. Yeah, Tiny Kong is probably the easiest to manage as far as uh, platforming challenges because her, tone, her uh, ponytail twirl makes it really easy to make corrections. And see, even getting over that thing was a breeze because, you know, she can spend so much time in the air adjusting herself. All right, camera. Don't screw me. And... Oh, oh, okay. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Why did I even bother? I could just use the warp pad. You know, like I said I was going to do a few minutes ago, but forgot to do. Yeah, because these coins are the only other items that she has past that, I think. Let's see. I don't see anything else. Um, don't worry about those purple bananas right there. I know it looks like we can get them, but they're actually in another area on the other side of a window. So, we'll get to them soon enough. Alright, and I really wish the camera wouldn't rotate every time I jumped. That's very annoying. And of course, lack of drop shadows doesn't help matters much. Okay, so now we just need to head up these conveyor belts. And once again, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. No drop shadow. None whatsoever. It plagues you throughout this entire game. How the hell are you? What the hell? There we go. How the hell are you supposed to know where you are in relationship to, uh, to another object? Whatever, another banana medal, and we just need to twirl over to this bonus barrel. Welcome to bonus and here we have a new bonus stage, Crazy Kong Clamor. Pretty easy, the lights will repeatedly go out and then come back on, and that golden banana will be in a new position. Fire at it and hit it before the lights go out, and try to avoid hitting the Kongs. This first one is pretty easy. Later on in the game, we're going to be running into uh, much faster versions of this, where the lights go on and off so fast that, you know, your reflexes required to actually hit the golden banana border on ESP. But don't worry, I do have a strategy that can help out with that. And no, it doesn't involve using restore points on the virtual console. Anyway, that's four out of five golden bananas for Tiny Kong. We'll be uh, getting her last one with that blueprint, even though we're still not done gathering up regular bananas for her. At 20 more, I know where those are. Come on, camera. There we go. I think I'll just uh, ponytail twirl down. Whoa! There we go. And yeah, I'll switch to Chunky right here. So I don't have to go all the way to the storage room, even though I'm going to have to go to the bottom floor anyway to hit his button. But I can do that with this. Stay away from me, motorized Kremlin. Good, good. He's not here. Is this the chunky monkey button? Yes, it is. All right. So unlike the other golden bananas that we get with the other Kongs here, little bit of pressure in the form of a 99 second timer. Fortunately, Chunky's banana is lower than all of the other Kongs, unfortunately. Fortunately, it involves fighting the camera to try to jump on this damn thing, so yeah, there we go. Fortunately, I got lucky. I usually fall off and have to climb back up. Okay, so now he has some green bananas on this uh, rotating platform thing here. So if we just stand in the same spot, he'll get all of them. There we go. Now I'll just walk over to the edge. And we'll stand here and get the rest of them. Alright, let's just stay right here. There's the other ones right there. And then I'll go down and get those coins. Come on, camera. Turn. Turn. There we go. Alright. Just run along with them. 
no point trying to jump over him going to the opposite edge because Chunky doesn't jump very high and we'd have to slow down to actually use his high jump. Oh, I didn't take, I thought I was going to take fall damage there. Okay, now we want to head back to the beginning area of Frantic Factory where we first came in. If I could find the door, there it is because there are still more bananas to get with Tiny and Chunky, and I think that's about it. Yeah, yeah, the other Kongs have all of their stuff. So, um, it's all on the beaten path for the most part, so we don't have to go too far out of our way, because uh, we're actually going to head towards uh, Snide's HQ to turn in our blueprints now. And unfortunately, this is probably the last area in the game in which I'm going to have a, um, a, a route with uh, minimal backtracking. Because after this, uh, especially in, oh god, the next area, the next area, yeah, I'm, pr I'm probably going to get really, really turned around because it's just, it's all over the place. God, I hate the next area. I just, fortunately, we have a little while before we need to be there because after we finish up Frantic Factory, we'll be uh, backtracking to Jungle Japes and Angry Aztec with our fully assembled team. And then we'll be going on to the next area. And I have things to say about it. I don't like it at all. I could probably sit here for hours and talk about the things that are wrong with it, but um, we'll have time when we actually get there because I I'm fairly confident that we will be there for hours. Don't be surprised if it's like two weeks worth of episodes. Now, I, I don't think it'll be that bad. And yeah, I think uh, we're done with Chunky Kong for right now. Let's go ahead and switch on over to Tiny. And we'll use that number three teleporter to actually, you know what? I believe there is a balloon here. Yep. What the hell? I totally hit that. There we go. Only ten more bananas for Tiny to go. And they are through this number three teleporter. And you. I'm not, you know what? Not even going to bother. I just want to get these 10 bananas and finish up this stage in this episode because it looks like we're uh, getting close to 20 minutes. At least that's how long I've been recording. I don't know how long this is going to be if I cut anything else out. Anyway, here's Tiny's last 10 bananas and back to Snides. Okay, and before I head in there to turn in the blueprints, I want to switch over to Diddy Kong real quick because he did have a few red coins at the top of the pole. And okay, climbing up on top of that crate's not going to work for me. There we go. I know, I keep saying I'm not going to go out of my way for coins, yet I keep going out of my way for coins. Guess I'm just greedy like that. I, I promise I'm not going to, you know, try to hunt down every single coin. In fact, I probably already missed some. Anyway, now we can turn in those blueprints. And I'm magically Donkey Kong. Because every single time we go to a new uh, Snides HQ, it has a new animation for the Pee Wee Herman machine. And I, at least I think it has a different one each time. Hmm. I might want to watch some older videos and keep an eye out for that. Okay, 59 bananas. Golden bananas, that is. And here's how we're looking on the fruit roll-up. It's just what it looks like to me. Okay, so how are we doing? Are we 100%? Good with Donkey Kong and Diddy and Lanky and Tiny and Chunky Kong is good. All right, Frantic Factory, 100% complete. And how long have I been recording? Uh, you know what? Screw it. I'll make it a little extra long today, and I'll fight the boss in this video. And there should be a Trough and Scoff portal in the storage room. Yep, there it is. And how many do we need for this one? We need 200. Okay, so I'll just start off with Donkey Kong. And then I'll switch over to Tiny Kong and use her to give them the last 100 bananas since this is going to be her boss. 
And given the theme of the stage, what a frantic boss fight it will be. A lot of people consider this to be one of the hardest boss fights in the game. I actually disagree. It's not so bad if you know what you're doing. I can think of about two more boss fights that are more frustrating than this one, in my opinion. In fact, the next boss after this is actually one of them. You, you'll see why. It's just got um, it's it's got a, a frustrating gimmick that I don't think controls very well, and they do this thing with the camera that I also don't like. Well, I'll I'll get to it when I get to it. But yeah, uh, prepare to hear me rage. But whatever, we're not worried about the next world's boss. We'll get to it when we get to it. We're more concerned with Frantic Factory's boss. You know, I know when the door is closed that it reminds me of Kingdom Hearts, but when it opens up, it reminds me of Diddy Kong Racing, which actually makes much more sense. All right, so we have full control from the get-go in order to trigger the boss. We want to stand on one of the four center squares and... Yeah, this, uh, this boss fight takes place on some raised platforms. Don't worry, if you fall, it's not instant death. Like most bosses, this one has uh, multiple cycles, and it just resets that current cycle that you're on. And what do we have here? A mystery box? We should go for it. I mean, a boss is a boss, but the mystery box can be anything. It can even be... The Boss! Mad Jack! And he immediately starts bouncing after us, and he's pretty quick. So what we want to do is just keep ponytail twirling from platform to platform, trying not to fall. And it's, the platform's are pretty far apart, so you do run the risk of falling if you're not careful. Anyway, he stops, and what we want... Okay, we're off to a bad start. Okay, so I fell... Um, which means that th this entire cycle resets. Not the whole boss fight, so if you're a few cycles in, it's not that big of a deal. But what I wanted to do is once he stops, you want to look at the color of platform that he's on, be it blue or white. And two buttons will appear in the, in the uh, area, and you want to find the button that's sitting on a matching color platform. Like this one, he's on white, so we want to go for this white platform. And watch out for the fireballs that he fires at you. They are very cool quick but after hitting the button on the matching colored platform whoa after hitting the button on the matching colored platform i almost fell there he takes damage and moves on to the next cycle nothing too different here other than the fact that he is a bit quicker he also bounces around a little bit longer i don't know how many jumps he makes but i think that's where a lot of the frustration with this boss fight comes from is that um he just takes forever to stop in the later cycles and if you uh fail to damage him whoa okay if you fail to damage him that means you have to repeat the whole cycle so it can get a bit tedious all right so he's on a blue platform i want to find a button on a blue platform there we go had a funny feeling it was here since i didn't see it anywhere else i knew it was off camera all right just like last time he starts bouncing around a little faster and he bounces a few more times i was just standing there because i wanted a rough idea of which direction he was going because i didn't want to bounce in a direction he was coming from i wanted to run away from him and as you can see, the camera here does a pretty good job of uh, focusing in on what it needs to focus on. And um, go figure, there's actually decent lit drop shadows, so you actually know where you are. Whoa! Okay. Anyway, blue platform thought for sure I was going to get hit by that. All right, that's three times. On to the fourth phase. And this is probably where a lot of people get most of their frustration because he's had enough with the fireballs when he stops now he's going to fire a very quick laser at you now there's a trick to that um as soon as he stops i'll explain it i'm hurting my thumbs trying to run away from him here because i gotta keep holding in one direction slightly shift because of the way that the camera turns there we go. Okay, so what we want to do is we don't immediately want to jump. We want to wait for him to charge the laser, and we want to kind of, um, yeah, we want to kind of lead him. There we go. 
Yeah, uh, let him charge up a little bit before jumping, or else he'll fire where you're going to be instead of where you were. And this is the final phase, and it's pretty much the same as the fourth phase, except now um, on the part where he's jumping, as you can see, he is invisible. So, yeah, you need to watch for those sparkles. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Uh, he didn't increase in speed too much, if at all. It's kind of hard to tell since we can't actually see him. But just keep an eye on the sparkles, keep on moving, don't fall, and you should be fine. There we go. All right. He quacked, so you know he stopped, and I probably just... Yep, all right. I totally saw that coming. Yeah, you can't actually see him charging up the laser now, so you have to listen to it. You have to wait for that, uh, you know, charging up sound and out... I'd say, you know, maybe count like 1-1000, one, 2-1000, one thousand, one thousand, and then jump. I, I kind of jumped the gun there. Um in a very literal sense by jumping too soon. So that was my fault. As long as I don't make the same mistake a billion more times, we should be fine. I mean, it's only my uh, second time I fell and f I, I uh, fell off the platforms and we're on the final phase. Listen, there we go, that should do. All right, just like that. Actually, you know what, you can see the laser. Huh, anyway, here's the last button. And with that pressed, Mad Jack is all jacked up. And I like the way he waves before falling. It's very, very Looney Tune-ish. And even though he's supposed to be a crocodile, the way he quacks like a duck and looks like a duck kind of reminds me of Quacker Jack from Darkwing Duck, but that's one more key for Kay Lumsey's case, so we'll turn it into him, but that's going to have to wait until next time. And until next time, thank you for watching that LP show, and have a one that is good.